Welcome to The Briefing Room. I'm your host, Chief David Malloy from the Novi Police Department, and today we're here to talk about the Emergency Telecommunications Center that we host in the Novi Police Department. And joining me on set, I have Dispatch Manager Joseph Burchette and Deputy Chief Tom Lindbergh. Welcome, gentlemen, to The Briefing Room. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of your background and experience in, in your position here with the Novi Police Department as the manager of the Communications Division? Um, I come from a, a center in Ohio. I've uh, worked 18 years uh, before I came to Michigan. Um, I have in my 19th year here, so it's 37 years overall. Um, I was selected through a process uh, back in 1990, and you know I've been there ever since. Um, as a manager, it's a little bit different than a telecommunicator. I don't work hands-on, but I just kind of oversee the operation, and not only just the personnel, but equipment too. And But you definitely have enough years behind the radio mic uh, with 18 plus years, not only in Ohio, but served a little bit of time at the West Bloomfield Township Police Department. I did. I had about 20 years where I actually, you know, set the desk or, you know, answered the 911 lines. So right. Know. Tell us a little bit about the staff makeup of uh, the communications division and the number of personnel and supervisors that you actually uh, have to manage. And Novi, we have, um, uh, we're authorized strength at 16 uh, telecommunicators, four of which are shift leaders, plus the dispatch manager. Um, we usually have four on a platoon. I work 12 hour shifts, seven to seven, and uh, we have a, a leader assigned to each one of those. So they actually do a lot of my work for me. Uh, yeah. I send it to them, and of course, they make sure that it gets done on a shift basis. Obviously, with the span of control, the, the shift leaders help you take care of some of the middle management type work that you don't necessarily with time cards and checking and, and just making sure that things are getting done right uh, like they should be getting done. Uh, they do a lot of the work. Uh, you know, they, they make it uh, relatively easy. They make sure everything's done each shift, you know, all the things that are required, and they report back to me. If there's anything that I need to do as far as getting it back to the, the uh, telecommunicators, it's an easy process of getting to them to uh, make sure that everybody is aware of whatever changes or what the policies might be. Um, but yes, they do. Great. Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the uh, some of the areas that we also provide dispatching services for, some of the contract communities that we have for communications. Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier, Chief, it is a regional communication center where not only do we dispatch for the Novi Police and Fire Department, but also South Lyon Police Department, South Lyon Fire Department, and Lyon Township Fire Department. And that's a contractual service where those communities pay us to provide the services to them. Um, and we're one of the larger PSAPs in o Oakland County, which we'll expound on in a minute. Um, whereas if there's an emergency in those communities, the, the phones get, or the calls get routed right to our regional center. So basically anything, pretty much west of Haggerty Road, almost all the way to Livingston County, is pretty much going to get answered inside of the Novi Police Department Communications Center. That's correct. Okay. And Joe, we recently celebrated in April uh, the National Emergency Telecommunicators Week. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the, the recognition we're able to provide our men and women? Actually, I would be glad to. They, uh, Telecommunicators Week is something that is reasonably uh, new. Uh, it, you know, over the years, the position has evolved to um, a very highly uh, specialized position. It takes a lot of training, a lot of expertise. And there was a movement uh, back in the 80s to have some form of recognition for uh, 911 operators across the nation. And actually, it was signed by the president, I believe, in 92 to make a week in April every year as a week telecommunicator week is just a way of recognizing their efforts. Yeah, and it's, it's unique that you speak about how the position has evolved over the years. Very much more technical with the computers, with the radios, with the technology, with the radios. So it's not just pushing the button and answering the radio. I mean, there's a multitude of things they could be doing at any given time. Talk to us a little bit about the unique positions we have with, uh, and, and how those are divided between police dispatch, fire, and call taking, if you will. Well, if I could give you some basis, uh, a benchmark of how it's evolved. When I began back in 1972, it's been a while, um, you know, we were re required to answer a, a phone. 911 really wasn't in existence yet. It was being planned. Um, as we know it today, certainly was not there. We, we answered three lines. And we typed a log on a Underwood electric typewriter um, and used a, a very basic radio system. As far as telecommunications, the computer system, our state system, it was uh, done on a, that very few people knew anything about, you know, and it was kind of learn as you go. As you know, today, uh, it, you can't even compare the two positions, you know, with uh, computer-aided dispatch, uh, with uh, the next generation 911 system that is coming, 
uh, with digital recording video. Uh, all those things have made it highly technical. They have to know a multitude of systems in order to you know, understand or, or complete their jobs uh, proficiently. The computer systems alone, we have you know, four or five separate systems that they have to understand. Yeah, and if an individual could kind of imagine, at each workstation that we have in the, on the communication center, they have at least four or five monitors that they have, you know, police, fire, CAD, the law enforcement information network, so. We currently have four work positions. We are, uh, we'll soon have a fifth position all of which that they duplicate each other. So at any given time, a dispatcher can dispatch either police uh, or fire. Um, they also have the state system that they have to be concerned with, the CAD system, and of course the 911 system is all computerized now. So they would have, I believe, five screens at each position that they have to monitor continually. And Aside from those, they have others in the room, such as the security system that they have to maintain as well. Absolutely. And on an ideal day, do we have a dispatcher providing police radio, fire dispatching, and then call taking. Can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Well, each platoon or each shift has four people assigned to it. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have four on duty. Uh, depending on the numbers of on duty, they, they divide the, the responsibilities up. We always have no less than two. And in that case, you have one assigned to police operations and one assigned to fire and EMS. Uh, fire and EMS typically will be your first choice of answering the 911 calls uh, with the police operator just because of the nature of the work. Um, you know, they pick up any overflow that may come in. Yeah, and I think, uh, Deputy Chief, if you could just speak of some of the volume, some of the calls for service that we take per day or per shift, and, and obviously the uniform division and communications are on the 12-hour shifts. Speak a little bit about some of the call volumes that they actually do see. Well, you know, the, the biggest benchmark that I see is last year our uh, dispatchers an answered over a quarter of a million phone calls. And those aren't even calls like, during business hours where those calls will go to the front desk. That doesn't include those. Those are the emergency 911 calls. Those, that, that encompasses everything. So over a quarter of a million phone calls come into our center. Um, obviously, during the daytime hours, the calls seem to be a lot heavier. Um, not necessarily for emergencies, but maybe for general information. And what's important to understand too is there's times where there could be many calls stacked up. And what it speaks to is the quality of the training of the dispatchers and that they can prioritize it. And this isn't a true emergency where I have to get a fire department out there now. I have to get an officer on the way now. And it takes a really unique individual to be able to do that um, through the training. Uh, be able to prioritize that and yet still provide the customer service to the people who are on the phone and have them understand we will be with you in a moment you know, we have something higher priority and still continuing that customer service through a whole call volume. And, and I know traditionally we, we summarize all of our shifts uh, with our end of shift report whether it's days or uh, midnights, seven at night or seven in the morning and typically we're seeing where the police department um, I think a low this week may have been 120 some calls per shift uh, at a high of I think 225 calls for service that I believe we had yesterday okay. and then we see similar numbers from our, some of our contract communities obviously the fire calls Novi Fire anywhere between 10 sometimes 20 calls per day that they might have to take and then South Lyon and Lyon Township Fire pretty much not as busy as, as they are in Novi but also um, as we learned uh, last month there, there's our, there are explosions that take place in some of these communities that we have to uh, the dispatchers have to get the resources there in a timely fashion and, and I think it's critical for the people to know that the Novi Police Department is really one of the only places in Novi where you can call 24 hours a day seven days a week whether it's your uh, sewage backup or there's a problem with your water but we're able to get all those resources out there so very all-encompassing but yet there's a lot of tasks that need to be provided so thank you uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a real quick break and then we'll come back for the second half of the briefing room so stay tuned <music> 